Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy holiday weekend. And uh, we got more holidays coming. High holy days, the, the fall feast. So we want to get in about, well, every Sunday we can here. Maybe not next Sunday, but every Sunday we can here with uh, lessons and some study on the, the fall feast of the Lord. So title of this fall feast, 2023, When God and Man Meet. And we're going to have our shofar blower in a few minutes show up here. Uh, John Lambert, he's run a little bit late. So well, we're entering in a time here on God's calendar, the fall feast. We had, had the spring feast in the spring. Fall feast is uh, Feast of Trumpets, Feast of Tabernacles, and the Day of Atonement. And in Hebrew culture, this is known as the High Holy Days, all part of God's redemption and reconciliation of bringing man back to himself and meeting with man. I want to read the beginning here of Psalm 81. Psalm 81 is a psalm that is uh, the psalmist wrote for the, for the fall feast, so we can see why. Psalm 81, verses 1 through 4. Sing aloud to God our strength. Raise a joyful shout. To the God of Jacob, sing aloud to God our strength, make a joyful shout to the God of Jacob, raise a song and strike the timbrel, a pleasant harp with the lute. Blow the trumpet, that's a shofar, at the time of the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day, that would be like at the, the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. For this is a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. Now, I don't know how we all uh, approach, approach the feast. It used to, when I started studying this, well, it was something way back there. Yes, a lot of it was fulfilled, and then a lot was way out in the, in the future. Now, well, we didn't have much to get involved in, in in the present. And, you know, this is so much about present involvement in the, in the fall feast as to what happened in the past and to what happened in, in the future. And what will happen? What will happen in the future? Exodus 23 says, three times a year you shall keep a feast to me." That would be Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles, and the word for feast there is Chagod, which means a festival, festive, dancing, celebrating, joy before the Lord. And then in Leviticus 23, the Lord talk, talks about all seven feasts, which would be the uh, four in the spring, and then the three to, to finish out uh, in, at the end of the summer, going into the fall. The feasts of Yahweh, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. Seven feasts include trumpets, and here the word for feast is moed, which means it's an appointed time. So we have a feast and a celebration, jo rejoicing and joy before the Lord, and feasts that are also God's appointed times. Um, interesting here, Moses met the Lord in the tent of meeting. That word there is moed. That means moed is an appointed time of meeting with God. It's appointment with God. An appointment for a meeting. And the Lord wants us to keep us meeting with Him every day. Hey, uh, yeah, you would come up here. John John Lambert is here with the shofar. And I want to just read before John blows that shofar. I just want to read something here that's going to give some understanding to the sound. We're not just looking for a shofar, we're looking for sound. And one of the things the Lord shared with me in studying this is Feast of Trumpets. It's a lot about the sound of the Lord getting to us, God getting His sound through us back to Him, God getting His sound through us, us making our sound, what we get from Him, back into this world. And we all know we're in a battle for our sound. We found that out in COVID. The enemy tried to shut down our shout. The enemy tried to shut down our sound. Now, I want to read this here. The Mystery of the Shofar by Rabbi Kirk Landry. 
this is going to give some insight into what John would be doing here. Like at Jericho, the Lord told them to march around the city silently. He said to give the alarm, and when they did, so to blow the shofars and give a shout. Because when they did, the walls would actually come down. Scientifically, that sound can move rocks, and that is what happened with the walls of Jericho that day. It was a perfect note, the perfect sound from God, which is his word. And with the sound, they brought down the walls of Jericho with horns and the breath in shofars and their own shout crafted by God. How a rabbi makes a shofar. After the rabbi removes the horn from the old nature, he puts it in water and salt. He immerses it in a sanctification tank and washes the shofar and cleanses it and takes it out after it has soaked long enough to be twisted. So it starts out like a curl and then it, it goes through a process of like steam and heat treatment in uh, probably hot water. And over time, it might take a year to get one of these to be shaped like, like the one John is holding. The rabbi's hands are a gift from the Lord, so when he picks up the cleanse horn and holds it, he knows just enough twists for that exact sound to come forth in that shofar. Then the shofar is taken put out in a drying place for almost a year. After the rabbi is sure the shofar is good and dry, he does the most important thing. It goes to the place of its strength, the place that used to be for force, but now he's, he says, it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, Zechariah 4, 6. No longer will this horn, the shofar, ever fight again on its own strength. Its, its only fight is the sound it makes, the breath of heaven, the breath of the Lord. It becomes its own dominion. The sound of the shofar becomes its purpose. The sound of the shofar becomes its glory. The rabbi then drills holes into the end and gets a perfect sound to come through it, the sound of heaven. This is what he is listening for. I thought that was some amazing insight and understanding there of what goes into this. So, John, if you go ahead. <laughs> specifically on that day. But here is another thing of great interest that happened on the Feast of Trumpets. September 5, 1774, it was the Feast of Trumpets in colonial America. They maybe didn't know it, but God had it all planned out. September 5, 1774, on the Feast of Trumpets and also Jewish New Year was the first meeting of the first U.S. Continental Congress in Philadelphia with Bible reading and prayer falling on September 7th. That's this event right here. I just want to pass some of these around here and just pass them on down to the back. 
you can look at them and see what you can pass that one back there. That's what happened on the Feast of Trumpets, 1774, in America, with a meeting of the First Continental Congress, followed by a prayer and Bible reading. God was meeting with man on the Feast of Trumpets to trumpet forth a new government into the earth, a government by we the people, for we the people, of we the people. The feast day set forth heavenly patterns in the earth. The seven biblical feasts represent the seven events of Yahweh's plan of redemption, reconciliation. The Lord says this about the Feast of Trumpets in this is Leviticus 23-23. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. You shall make an offering by fire made to the Lord. I come across this recently in a book from Chuck Pierce that I read several years ago called Interpreting the Times. And in this book, Chuck Pierce makes an interesting statement. In the Hebrew culture, life was defined by events that would be like the feast, related through relationship. When God and man meet, the principles like the feast and the word of God manifest and become a reality in time. These events, these feasts, are tangible and allow us to measure and weigh a faith action or supernatural interaction and determine that heaven's plan has invaded Earth's atmosphere. The feast is the wisdom of God. Heaven's plan invading Earth's atmosphere. So this year, the Feast of Trumpets 2023 begins at sunset on Friday, September 15 goes for two days. It's the fifth of the seven feasts and it's the first of the fall feasts. So uh, just look at the, everybody should have a calendar. If not, you can ask for one. This is a good outline of how we can follow the fall feasts going through the end of the Feast of Tabernacles. It's a memorial of blowing trumpets. The interesting thing is here to found it says it's a memorial of blowing trumpets. In Hebrew, it's called Yom Torua. Yom is day, Torua is blowing or shouting. But the interesting thing is there are the instruction in uh, Leviticus 23, the word trumpets is not in the original language. I noticed something interesting. The main translation of that word Torua, which a lot of Bibles translate as trumpets, is shouting, blowing. But the main action or activity of that is blowing of the shofar. This is really based on two words, torua and rua, are most often translated shouting, but is also used in the blowing of the shofar. The shofar of the ram's horn connects back to Abraham and Isaac, or the Lord had instructed Abraham to find Isaac for the sacrifice of Mount Moriah, and the Lord intervened with his providence and in a thicket or a bush close by a, a, a ram was caught in its horns in the thicket and it's believed from there that's where the ram's horn came about when the shofar came about into Israel as a means of blowing the shofar so what else has happened on September 29. This is this is really interesting. Doing some research on this, I went to a website called uh, GodsKingdom.org. Bible scholar Stephen Jones has some interesting things to say. He and another Bible scholar, Chuck Missler, both come up with this. I'm not saying they're right, but they both come up with this. So a lot of research is that September 29, 2 B.C., Feast of Trumpets was when Jesus was born. Now if that's true, that's trumpeting forth a new era for mankind into the earth. 
although some make a very strong case for uh, Jesus being born on the Feast of Tabernacles. So, if you go by the dating, I, I believe Jesus was born on the Feast of Trumpets, uh, trumpeting forth a new era for mankind. Interesting here, the Lord says that this Feast of Trumpets was to be celebrated and observed on the first day of the seventh month, which is the month of Tishri. But that's also when the Jewish New Year begins in modern Judaism. So how can you have a new year beginning in the seventh month? That brought a lot about that brings about a lot of confusion, a lot of people, it's caused a lot of misunderstanding. But I thought it important to clarify some things here in time because, you see, two, two things here with the Feast of Trumpets that makes it unique and it sets it apart from all the other feasts is its timing. First day of the month, no other feast has it. And the main activity is sound. God's sound coming through for his purposes, through his people, through the instrument of the uh, shofar. So, so how can we have a feast like the Feast of Trumpets begin on the uh, first day of the seventh month, yet when the Jewish New Year is starting on, on also that same day, we come across this. Again, I went to this website, godskingdom.org, by Bible scholar, teacher uh, Stephen Jones. You want to get some real deep information, a lot of understanding. This, this man has thousands and thousands of pages of research on Bible, history, Old Testament, present, New Testament, and uh, going into the future. Well, he writes this, Genesis 8.13 tells us that the water, Noah's flood, dried up on the first day of the last month. This day later came to be celebrated as Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets. God told Moses in Exodus to make the, the Passover month the first month instead of Tishri, the month of the fall feast. This is why Tishri is now the seventh month in the Hebrew calendar. In Noah's day, Tishri was still the first month and considered to be the beginning of the creation of man. So what we have happened in modern Judaism is Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the Jewish New Year, goes back to the old dating system prior to the days of Moses in the days of Noah and the world prior to the flood to where the new year was considered to begin on back in uh, the fall because they believe that dated back to the creation of uh, the earth by Almighty God. So the true biblical year starts on the first day of Passover month. I come across this here too from uh, Bible teacher Stephen Jones on understanding when the year begins. It's, uh, and it really uh, gave me a lot of understanding of all the confusion that's out there on this. It's interesting to see that when God was ready to lead Israel out of Egypt, he told Moses that the Passover month of Eve was to be reckoned as their first month. From then on, Israel numbered its months from the first crescent moon at the Passover spring of the year. Nonetheless, their Sabbath years and jubilees were proclaimed in the fall of the year on the 10th day of the month. That's the Day of Atonement, September, October. This was a practical necessity seen as it would be the end of the growing season. I thought that was interesting to kind of clarify that confusion there of all this uh, uh, when the different years start. Now going back to the word for trumpets, or blowing trumpets, is really a shout and a blowing. Teruah, translated shout, blowing. I found this interesting in Zechariah 9.9. It says, shout, Uruah, O daughter of Jerusalem, your king is coming to you, referring to the birth of Jesus Christ coming into the world. It's very well could have been on the Feast of Trumpets. Well, we are entering into a war, have been in a war for the last few years to keep our shout, to keep our sound. The enemy's trying to shut us up, silence us with our, with our sound, all the mass mandates, 
shut down, church shut down of singing in, in church services. Everybody else out there could make their ruckus, but the church was hit hard in uh, this war against silence in us over our sound. The Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, is to be the sound from God's people. The power of the shofar and the shout of God's people. This is interesting here from Joshua 6 and the defeat of Jericho. Joshua 6, 16. At the seventh time that happened when the priests blew the trumpets, that is the shofar, that Joseph said to the people, Shout, Ruah, that is to split the ears with a shout. The Lord has given you the city. Verse 20. So the people shouted, Ruah. Then the priests blew the shofars. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the shofar, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall of Jericho fell down flat. We notice this is an amazing act of spiritual warfare, the sound of God's people. So we want to press in for the sound of, of God's people, just out of ourselves, back to God, to each other, to the atmosphere, to the community, the society we live in. But that's why I asked in a few minutes we're going to go into the, the decrees and declarations here. I felt a real urgency of that. Well, like from what Paul Keith Davis said here too, he believes the Lord has something to say to us through the Feast of, of Trumpets. Well, this is how the event happened in ancient Israel. In ancient Israel, there were two witnesses out on nearby hills near Jerusalem looking for the sighting of the new moon. And definitely if it was cloudy, he had his challenges. But it was critically important on the eve of the Feast of Trumpets because they would report back to the temple, to the council, the Sanhedrin, to the priesthood of uh, Jerusalem, we have seen the new moon. So they could announce it, shout it, by blowing shofars, setting bonfires on hilltops to send forth a message by sight to the nearby Hebrew community. Only on the Feast of Trumpets new moon was the shofar blown for a new moon. The others were the silver trumpets. So to blowing trumpets, there's more than the shofar. There's the two silver trumpets, which the Lord commanded Moses to make in Numbers 10. And that's important too, because that was also involved in the blowing of trumpets on the Feast of Trumpets. And the Lord said to Moses, saying, Make two silver trumpets for yourself. You shall make them of hammered work. You shall use them for calling the congregation and for directing the movement of the camps. So they took a lot of their guidance, their signaling, from what the Levites, the priests, would do with these uh, two silver trumpets. When you go to war in your land against the enemy who oppressed you, then you shall sound alarm with these silver trumpets. And you will be remembered before the Lord and saved from your enemies. In the day of your gladness and in your appointed feast and at the beginning of your months, that's the new moon, you shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offering. So, was evolved a lot in communication, spiritual warfare, worship, joy, Just want to share some more study notes here before we before we go into our decrees and declarations. Not only does the shofar blast signal the beginning of the seventh month when the new crescent moon is sighted, but it announces the return of the bridegroom Yeshua coming for his bride. The very first scripture records the blowing of the shofar occurring was to herald Yahweh's giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai, where it says that the shofar blast sounded long and hard, which was the Lord himself blowing the trumpet from heaven or coming down 
close to the Israelite people in sounding a trumpet announcing a new sound into the earth. And we have that sound still with us today. The shofar was blown to herald to announce the day of atonement, to announce the year of Jubilee every 50 years. The shofar was blown when a king was anointed. The shofar was blown to rally the troops. The shofar was blown to announce Yahweh's presence and to, and to praise and worship him. The shofar was blown to call the people to fasting and repentance. The shofar was blown to sound the alarm for war. The shofar was even blown by Yahweh himself, like in Exodus 19. The shofar was, was blown by the angels. That's in Revelation chapter 8, other chapters there. The shofar was blown to announce the coming of a Jewish bridegroom and to fetch his betrothed. A picture of Yeshua returning for his bride and his church. There are different sounds that are made on the shofar. Well, there's probably 109 sounds, sounds or combinations of sounds like two longs, three shorts, that type of a thing. Basically, it comes into about four types of sounds. A takia, I won't have time to explain all this. The shivarim, the teruah, and the takia gadola. The last shofar blown on Yom Teruah is very likely that which Paul refers to as the last trumpet shofar in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, signaling the resurrection of the righteous dead to me, Yeshua. A parable of the ten virgins in Matthew is a picture of this. Prior to the bridegroom return, the shofar and a shout is made and announced it to the bride that the groom is on his way. This stage of the Hebrew wedding is pictured in the day of the awakening blast. Yom Peru is primarily known as the day of the awakening blast. On Yom Peru, the Feast of Trumpets, the Israelite bridegroom would return from his father's house after having spent six months building the house for the new couple. And here's another thing from Dr. Chuck Missler, uh, a late Bible teacher. Chuck Missler was a great Bible teacher, scholar, and left us with a wealth of knowledge on the Bible. He says, the Feast of Trumpets prophesies the resurrection of the dead. It has been called in Jewish circles the Day of the Awakening Blast. The first event on the prophetic calendar relating to the second coming of Christ is the resurrection of the dead. We believe that the appointed time for this event is on the Feast of Trumpets of some year. For this reason, Jesus spoke of his coming in Matthew 25, saying, Be on the alert, for you do not know the day nor the hour. And this phrase about not knowing the day nor the hour is peculiar Hebrew, which they specifically applied to the Feast of Trumpets whose beginning was unknown until the new moon was sighted. It all depended on the new moon being sighted. Well, I guess it's all different today in modern technology. Back then, it depended upon man and the weather and being in the right place at the right time to see the new moon. Well, now with uh, astronomical science, the new moon can be pinpointed down to one second years ahead. Interesting. More notes here from Dr. Stephen Jones, trusting with our Lord. The Feast of Trumpets signifies the resurrection of the dead. The Lord himself will ascend with the trumpet of God and the dead, and Christ will rise first. This is confirmed in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable. These three instructions of the purpose of the Feast of Trumpets. And these three instructions tell us about prophetic events that are yet to occur on this feast day. So we've been looking at some past things, even in our own time, that have happened on the Feast of Trumpets. And 
into years ahead. Well, I sense, I'm sensing a very, let me read this here yet, about the last trip from Dr. Chuck Missler. Now, so far, and this is interesting here, the shofar is associated with Akedah, Abraham's offering of Isaac on Mount Moriah, as detailed in Genesis 22. Rabbinical tradition associates the left horn of the ram as the first trump and the right horn as the last trump. A distinguishing feature of the celebration of the blast, climatic blast, the key of shofar, this is not the usual series of short blasts signaling alarm or bad news. Rather, it is a long blast signaling victory or good news. It is the blast that is referred to as the last trump. Now, that was interesting. Get some understanding here of what's all gone into God's forming of the Feast of Trumpets giving us a piece of trumpets, how we can activate it, be involved in it now, and experience it now, and also look forward to future activations, future fulfillments even in our time. But well, sent out the email about getting our decrees ready. And if you don't have your decrees ready yet, maybe you can look at something and just get something together. I, I gave an, an example or two in a way. The Feast of Trumpets has an element of divine timing built into it. Trumpets has a record on it for God to show up with specific events, like the First Continental Congress, forming our nation, meeting on the First of Trumpets, the birth of Elijah, Abraham possibly being on the Feast of Trumpets. The birth of Jesus very likely being on the Feast of Trumpets can't say for certain. But the Feast of Trumpets is also about a voice being trumpeted forth for where we are at now in time. And I decided to do this, as you see here, as an appeal to heaven again, which was the first flag of our United States of America by the early Continental uh, Congress, the early Continental Army, really the first U.S. Navy come up with this flag, appeal to heaven. That was their decree, that was one of their declarations, appeal to heaven. Still is. For the last uh, month, listening to uh, Doug Sheets and Chuck Pierce, many of us have followed uh, those words. They are speaking to us and admonishing us with a great urgency, but also with a great hope and anticipation of a great reset for good things to come in this United States of America. Doug Sheets and his brother Tim Sheets have been on a warfare campaign with teams to visit and prophesy and decree over numerous points in the nation, corners of states, boundaries of states, the boundaries and borders of our nation, different points around our nation, in overturning of evil powers, and to reset our nation back to God's destiny. According to Tim and Deb Sheets, the power of the decree by thousands of thousands of believers in America is working to overturn evil, ruling systems of bringing in God's reset for this nation. So intensify our decrees, turn up the volume of our decrees, turn up the volume of the utterance of our decrees, and may these decrees come up before the Lord, Yahweh. I think I see what, what's happening here is what both of these two brothers are saying, Dutch and Tim Sheets. I think many of us, we've been doing these decrees for years. 
I remember when I first come into the understanding that I could speak a decree and a declaration and it would have power before the Lord. Wow, it was amazing. That was only about over 10 years ago. I learned about that. Was like, wow. My voice has power with the Lord to speak a decree and a declaration. But the challenge in playing them with that is, is that the words that we get with decrees and declarations from the Lord that it does agree with Holy Spirit. When we have some agreement with the Holy Spirit, God says, I can agree with that. I can send forth an angel to link with that word. I can send forth an angel to run with that word and fulfill that decree. I think it would be like Acts chapter 10. Cornelius had been praying and praying and praying. He probably wanted the Lord, is this any good? Is it getting anywhere? Or I don't see any response to my prayers. But the Lord took note of Cornelius' prayers. The Cornelius' prayers came up before the Lord as a memorial. The Lord says, wow, these man's prayers, and he was in the Jew. He was a man of pagan Roman background. The Lord says, this man's prayers are getting my attention. They've come up to a volume. I'm going to act on it. And he sent an angel to get involved. An angel visited your niggers in a vision. And look what Tim and Dutch are saying is, is our decrees, don't go weary in decreeing our decrees and declaring our declarations. That is coming up to a volume that the Lord is recognizing it. He's going to send angels to act upon it. As those decree words become God's words uttered through our mouth. See, God told two prophets in the Old Testament, I have put my words in your mouth. That puts the fear of God in me to think, okay, I better really be hearing something. When I speak a decree, that it is or it is something that God can agree with. And God can use it and do great things with it. Psalm 103 20, bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, healing, hearkening, the voice of his word, his word coming through us. This is what Tim Sheets is saying. The faith decrees my people have sworn, have sown, will accumulate to fullness and will lead to great reset in this nation through September and beyond. Decree your faith, and the angel armies will assist in the coming reset. According to Psalm 103, angels are present to get their assignments as Holy Spirit has them run with our decrees. There is a reforming of this nation back to its covenant roots. This will be with great shaking. We are not bystanders, neither is our God a bystander in this. Appeal to heaven. My unshakable kingdom will arise and bring about realignment to covenant roots in this nation. I believe between now and the Feast of Trumpets, we, we're always a good opportunity with the Lord. But there are other times that are exceptional opportunity. God ordained a great opportunity or window of opportunity before us between now and the Feast of Trumpets because of the prophecy of Tim Sheets and Dead Sheets and the timing of the Feast of Trumpets with their prophecy and what the Lord is going to do in this nation. And we want to have a part in that right here. I want to, you can have your decrees ready and we'll get, uh, do we have more than one microphone here we can use? You can uh, get the other uh, microphone ready and we can go with our decrees. This is a decree from Dead Sheets from July 1 of, it, of last year, we decree that God-honoring, Bible-believing, brilliant, and patriotic leaders are being raised up to restore the destiny and greatness of America. That's one, and uh, we can just pass these mics around. <clears throat> I have a couple here. 
Um, first of all, I declare the bride of Christ to rise up in her authority and anointing to shine in the radiance of the glory of God and to advance the kingdom of God, to shine light into the darkness. I declare the bride will be fearless and uncompromising, standing strong and true by the power of the Holy Spirit, even in the midst of persecution. And then on another topic, I uh, have a declaration on restoration of family. Do you want me to go ahead now? Yep. Okay. I declare restoration of marriages and families. The hearts of the fathers and mothers turned to babies in the womb and children, and the hearts of the children turned to the mothers and fathers. I declare the hearts of husbands and wives will be turned to one another, and I declare the hearts of the families will be turned to God. Revival and restoration to the family. Any more? I declare the earth is the Lord's, and the earth includes America, so I'll we'll say America is the Lord's and all its fullness. America and those who dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the waters. So in America, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come again. Who is this King of glory, the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle? Lift up your heads, O ye gates, lift up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in to America. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Or we're looking for more decrees back there. I just want to hold this up here. I think this coming out of here. The state of Kansas, the revival state. Amen. We declare that the well of revival and inheritance of spiritual awakening has been uncapped in Kansas. The Issachar release is upon Kansas to know and understand God's appointed times. It's what we're doing right here. We're declaring that decree here this morning. The state of Kansas to the churches and evil even penetrate the government and the society of our nation to know, know the appointed times of God. And that we will have a great appointment coming forth this Feast of Trumpets in the state of Kansas. Um, but I would just like to uh, decree that uh, the Father has created each one of us as unique beings matter to our Father God, and that as we come together, we are aware that there are blueprints in the heavenly realm that are associated with God's kingdom coming to this earth, and just as Moses was sent into the realms of the heavenlies to receive the blueprint for the wilderness tabernacle so we too have been called to uh, step into the heavenly realm and begin to see and hear uh, outside of what our natural eyes and ears can hear for for this city for the ecclesia this community and the believers we are also acknowledging that the angelic uh, hosts that have been assigned to this region, we will acknowledge them and ask for relationship with them by name as we co-work with and co-create with them and uh, begin to see the hand of God bring forth His purpose and His plan in the region of Hesta and the region of the church here. So we believe these things and we trust you, Father, to continue to reveal to our hearts where we stand as sons of God in the uh, place of these things with our feet on the ground. Thank you, Ken. I will finish with this one. This one last one here from Dutch Sheets. We decree that America was sounded by God under an appeal to heaven and that an appeal to heaven will give us a rebirth as a nation. We decree that we are a voice for him and like a trumpet for him. 
to the ends of the earth and the gospel of the kingdom will go forth from America to all people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And I guess the next class will be two weeks from today because a week from today, is that right? Alvin East, yep. Church in the Park next Sunday. So be uh, two weeks from today, we will be here for going into a day of atonement. And um, after that, one more Sunday, moving into the Feast of Tabernacles. So I hope that I gave you some idea of what we can do with decrees and how the Lord looks for our decrees, declarations, and how he has commissioned and assigned angels to work with our decrees and our declarations. And the angels will go forth and win great battles for it. Be blessed every week. Thank you.